going to talk today about cages. You knew what a puppy, you've got an eight-week-old puppy, and do you put him in a cage or not? She's getting a little bit too bitey for my liking. Yes. Do you put them in a cage or Good girl. Good girl. Hey, good girl. Do you put your eight-week-old puppy in a cage or is it cruel? Uh, is it unkind? Is it going to scare the dog? Um, a cage isn't cruel. isn't unkind. The dog can learn to really love being in a cage. A cage is basically an enclosure which is open to all sides. Now if you were to put a cage in the middle of the room and it's open to all sides and then lock a dog in there, it's going to feel pretty vulnerable. Um, a dog wants to be secure that they're not going to be attacked from behind, they don't want to be constantly looking on his back and checking and from above that he's safe. So think about where your cage is going to be. Uh, I'd advise to put it in the corner of a room. A dog would naturally go to the corner of a room to lie down anyway. Um, and then try and cover it, cover the sides, the back and the top, so they've just got one opening or one um, area of vulnerability maybe, or entrance and exit, so you, your dog feels nice and secure in there rather than feeling vulnerable. Um, a cage is a fantastic tool to ha help teach your dog that outside of the house is for weaning and inside of the house isn't for weaning. And the way that I do that is I put the dog in the cage as much as I can and then I'll, I'll pick it up and take him outside, let him have a wee, and then he can come in and play, and then he goes back in the cage. Now, a lot of people think that a, a dog should have freedom to roam around the house. I think, and the way I work, is I keep my dog in the cage at every time that I can't give the dog 100% attention. I want the dog not to be in the habit that if he wants to entertain himself, he gets up and does what he wants. I want the dog to think that if I want to entertain myself, I'll go to daddy. Um, and when I can't entertain the dog, it goes back in the cage. The dog then sits in the cage looking at me, desperately, longingly, to come out and play with me. And I leave him in the cage still. And that, that, um, that longing builds up in the dog just sits there watching you all day long thinking to himself I want to get out there, I want to play with my dad and when he does get out and come play with me that meaningful time with me then it's not just, oh I'm out in the cage what shall I do, what's that over there Ooh, what's that over there, it's, there's my dad I'm going to interact with my dad and we build a really good bond so a cage isn't something to just sleep in use a cage when you can't entertain your dog and you'll build a bond there straight away you'll teach your dog that you're his source of entertainment and you'll teach a dog not to go around finding his own entertainment, that that's a nice chill out time, and, and it'll teach a dog to chill as well. Um, and it's, it's also a good tool for toilet training, so I would definitely, definitely, definitely get a cage to start with, use the cage, you know, do Dolly's fine. Uh, if I were to go upstairs now and do something, I know I could leave these dogs out and there'd be no disruption or destruction. But it's not just about that. I want that anticipation in that dog. Where's my dad? Where's my dad? Where's my dad? When's he coming? When's he coming? And if I can't give him my attention, I'll sit on the on the chair doing my work. The dog's sit there looking at me longingly. My wife on the other hand thinks, and a lot of people other, will think that if you're in the house, the dog should be out and roaming free. And my wife is inclined to have more problems than I am with the dog, and it's for that reason. Um, if you can't entertain the dog 100%, put him in the cage, and then when you can entertain the dog, it'll be more meaningful. So that's cages discussed. Thank you for watching me and Fern. Please give us a subscribe, a like, a share, and comment below with anything you've got for us.